I grew up such a fan of sports memorabilia and sports cards, and I'm really excited that this show is both going to highlight that as well as the awesome entrepreneurs that make it all possible. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into Talking Shop. Today, with a very special episode, we're going to be talking all about trading because we have big or better on the show, my friend. How are you? Awesome. Great to be here. So first things first, for anybody who doesn't know, um, what you do, and I'm curious where the idea originated from, but you trade items, physical objects, you know, some of which, you know, uh, of the nature we talk about regularly on this show in the form of I've seen Charizards on your account, um, trading items up from things like a paperclip or a rock or whatever it is all the way to you, you traded that to an airplane and now you're trying to trade it to a house. How did all of that originate? Yeah, so it, it all kind of started, I watched some TED talk a few years ago, some guy named Cal McDonald traded a paperclip and through a series of trade got up to a house. So me and my, buddy, or me and my brothers have always been kind of hustlers. We'd buy and sell cars every once in a while. We're like, hey, let's see who's the best at this trading thing. None of us had really done it like super seriously. So we decided, hey, let's do a little competition and see what we can do with this. And so we all decided, hey, let's start with an item that's roughly the same value. And I'd recently gotten a pair of AirPods from my work, just like as a gift. I was like, hey, let's start in this range. And I kind of wanted to skip the paperclip range because I'm sure like people just offer all this trash. It's like, hey, let's just try out with a little bit of value and see where we could run with it. And then it quickly got out of hand and the items got bigger and bigger. That's crazy. But now you are trading from a rock. Yeah. So it, it, a lot of the comments on my TikTok page or Instagram, there's like, hey, it doesn't really count. You started with AirPods. I'm like, well, I'm going to go start with like something that has no value. So I walked outside my apartment, picked up a rock that was just right outside and said, hey, I'm going to see if I can trade this up to a house. And it's, it's working so far, at least. Hopefully I'm only a few trades away. That's amazing. What what's been your favorite personal item that you've gotten? I mean, I saw the Charizard on there. Is there anything in particular that you you uh, it was tough to let go? Um, I I think definitely. I mean, I'm a big Pokemon fan. I've got a big like personal collection myself. So that being able to get like that complete base set, you got that Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur. It was just so fun to have that complete set Man. and then sad to let it go. But I, I, there were a couple extra cards. There were a couple extra hollows that I did keep and sent into like PSA. But so I just kept that complete set and traded it off though. So that's probably the hardest thing that I've, I've had to give away. Very nice. Now, do you think that the people are trading it with you for the exposure that it gives them or because they like you or because they don't care? Like why, why do you think people would trade down? Yeah, and I... I a big piece of it is like, this is the purest form, I feel like, of capitalism or economics, where it's just trade. And a lot of people have old things that are just kind of laying around that their value is different or like the intrinsic value. They want something new. So they're willing to give up their item that has a higher monetary value for something that they want. So when I started all of this, like my first um, trading all the way to the plane, most of that was done before I even had an, an audience. And then I made the videos kind of later with the content that I had made. So a lot of it was a lot of people think, hey, it's because you have a ton of TikTok followers or Instagram followers. And most of it, this, and I've been trading for the last couple of years, is just because people want something and you can kind of ride the brand of Apple or Nintendo and people are just willing because they want an item, they'll give up their item that they see is less valuable because it's old or used for whatever I have. That's so... That's so interesting. Yeah. So how are you finding these people to trade with? Are you posting uh, that and they're hitting you up? Or are you surfing Craigslist? What are you doing? Um, the vast majority of it is possible because of Facebook Marketplace and right. the way that I post. But I mean, I'll post that very first pair of AirPods. I posted it and within a couple hours have 100 people reach out to me. And it was especially like people just want Apple products. And, and then the same thing when I got a PS4 and same thing with the switch is like as soon as you post it people see for trade and they're like well i've got something and a lot of the offers aren't like the best and you just kind of have to sift through a lot of the trash to find the gold there bro you're making me want to just trade <laughs> not not for a video i just want to like i just want to who wants a freaking camera yeah it's like 
we all have so much junk lying around. I feel like we're all hoarders at, at, you know, by default. Um, so it's, it's really awesome to see you, you making something out of that fact. <laughs> well, and I think that's what makes it all possible. Like whether it's an, an older camera that like a new, a new one just came out, but the old one still has value, but like that person's like, Oh, this is old. So they think a lot of people don't know how to value items and they just think, Oh, I've had this forever. It's probably not worth anything. And I, that's where I think it is really funny. Some of the trades that'll happen is, and probably the craziest trade I did that I'm going to be posting about soon is um, I had a 2013 iMac, which is a seven year old computer. And then someone goes out there and offers me a, a Toyota Tundra for it, like a 2000 Toyota Tundra. And I'm like, why the heck are you giving me a truck for this like $300 computer? And he's like, Oh, it's just my old car. Just you, you have to come pick it up though. And I'm just like, okay, sounds good. And like the guy knew exactly what he was doing. He's just like, no, I really need that iMac for my podcast that I'm launching. I'm like, yes, sir. I'll come right over. Whoa. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. But it's, it's crazy because, you know, I, I think part of that goes to show that, you know, it's just as much about uh, the mental dollar as it is the physical dollar where it's like even i'll notice this when i'm selling a, a sports card right if i'm selling the card i'm going to sell it to you for a lot less in person than i will online mm -hmm. for so many reasons one because of fees and things of that nature mm -hmm. online but also uh just because i don't want to go through the mental process of packing it up driving to the post office talking to somebody you know, sending you a photo of their yeah, receipt. exactly. Like, it's so obnoxious <laughs> all the work that it takes to actually do something online or, or sell anything. So that val and mental energy is priceless. So mm -hmm. you know, being able to forego that in the form of like a physical trade or something is, is great. Yeah, and one of the biggest things is people or most people just hate to sell things. Like they hate the low ballers. They hate to post. They hate meeting up. Negotiating is like their least favorite thing. So if I can just come in or have an item they want and all they have to do is say, hey, I've got this old thing or with this item sitting around, would you trade for it? Like it just is because it's not an exchange of money. I think it's emotionally easier for a lot of people. Mm. Content aside, do you think somebody could make a living doing this? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't have like a great job where I'm at, like, I could totally make full-time money doing, doing this. And I mean, I've paid my rent the last year, year and a half with just trading money. That's, that's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything out there that you, I mean, you said you want to, you want a house. Um, is there anything else that you're, you're thinking about or in search of? Um, the, the hard part is like, because I've gotten so used to it, I've got like, I have zero attachment. Like, so if I get an item, it's just like an item, but I'm a big like Corvette guy. Like it's my dream car. And I've had a couple along the way doing this, but it's like, as soon as I get it, I just see, Oh cr crap. Like I can see the value of what I could trade this for. So I can never hold on to anything for very long. That's probably more of a <laughs> blessing than a curse. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. A yacht would be pretty cool. Yeah. That would be and cool. and it's, it's, it's funny when you get up and that's where I'm hoping like, I mean, it's TikTok. I've only been on TikTok and Instagram, like really posting for the last couple months. So it's been fun to see that kind of blow up. But I do think that'll help me down the road with like bigger trades and being able to like leverage that audience for see if I can use that as some sort of business exposure to work out some sweet deals. A hundred percent. You could probably get a company that produces something to sponsor the whole series too. That would be smart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, TikTok is, is such an incredible platform. Like, you know, from, from my own experience, honestly, I don't spend as much time on it personally as I should, but uh, for the brand that I started hoops nation, you know, it took three and a half years to get a million followers on Instagram. It took three months to get 4 million on TikTok. It's like, it's wild. What are we doing here? What are we doing? <laughs> there was nothing special. Where was but, this, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. But that is the power of TikTok. And the craziest thing is that it's all real. Like, it's all yeah. people. I don't know where they're coming from, but they're yeah. real. It's all these kids that aren't even on Instagram. The, yeah. Yeah. 
and that's one of the wildest things. Like I, I, there were a few, there were a few other like big traders on TikTok, and um, one specifically that kind of like inspired me. Is, hey, like maybe I should just actually make some videos. And it's like the Trade Me Project, and she started with uh, Bobby Pin and trying to get up to a house, and it's been super cool to see. But she had like three million followers, and she was just up to a MacBook, and I'm like, man, I've been trading for like two years, and I've had tons of MacBooks. Like what the freak? Like I gotta get on TikTok. And by the end, like I post my first video and then post my second video day two. And by the end of that, like 48 hour period, I had a hundred thousand followers. I'm like, what the hell like, is going yeah. on? <laughs> so crazy how that is, man. It's awesome though. It's awesome. <laughs> and, and it does sometimes convert to other platforms, which is good too. Um, <laughs> so w- one of the last questions I've got for you um, do you, have you thought about trading with celebrities and adding um, that element to it? Yeah, I've tried to get in contact with a few people, especially like um, Logan Paul and like Gary V. Like when I got those Pokemon cards a couple months ago, it was like right before the Logan Paul like Pokemon box break. Mm-hmm. And I tried to get his attention, called him out. But I mean, obviously, like he's got like they've got so much going on, but it's definitely like a play that I want to use in the future. Um, and I mean, the trading stuff, it really is like super fun. There's definitely like a trading high when you're kind of like in the zone of it. So yeah, definitely something I want to, I want to do in the future and hopefully can le- leverage my audience and then use that to get in front of the right people to do some fun trades. That's smart, man. Well, if you have any cool cards ever, you got to let me know. Yeah, we, we should definitely talk. <laughs> That's to let me know. Where are you based, by the way? Uh, I'm in Utah. Okay, cool. That's, that's a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so people can find you at Big or Better on TikTok and at Bigger Better Trading on Instagram, correct? Yeah, those are the two main places. I'm hoping to get on YouTube here soon and do some longer form stuff showing step by step how to actually do this. Full vlogs would be dope. Well, my brother, you are wildly impressive and I can't wait to see uh, what house you own. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. This has been awesome. Yeah, no problem. All right, everybody. See you on the next one.